Fame is the world's most sought-after commodity. You're glamorous, sexy, even irresistible. You're envied, adored, even idolized. But fame always comes at a price. There's temptation, scrutiny, intrusion, and there's the greatest anxiety of them all, the celebrity stalker. My intention was build a friendship, relation, and maybe from this relation can find later, uh, if she uh, really wants, we can make the marriage or like that. It's the greatest fear for the rich and famous. Celebrities face real dangers from obsessed fans, sometimes with deadly consequences. The crime that changed American law and opened the world's eyes to the dangers of celebrity stalking occurred in 1989. Rebecca Schaefer was a young actress who had just found fame in a TV series called My Sister Sam. She lived in an apartment with a broken intercom and didn't have any security. Schaefer had attracted the lurid interest of a young man called Robert Bardo. Bardo became infatuated with the young actress and began to stalk her. Detective Jeff Dunn from the LAPD is assigned to protect Hollywood stars from people like Bardo. Because of his mental disorder, uh, he developed this uh, obsession that he had a personal relationship with Ms. Schaefer. And based on that perceived relationship, uh, he came to California several times trying to make contact with her. Bardo would sign up with tour groups at the studios, then break away to try to make contact with Schaefer at her soundstage. As there were no anti-stalking laws then, the studio security could only catch him, put him on a bus, and send him home. Park Dietz is a forensic psychiatrist. He was assigned to the Bardo case. When he went to see her the first time, she came to the door and they had a brief conversation. He walked away for a time, got something to eat, and what he told me was that while he was eating, he became annoyed that he'd sacrificed so much to come see her and had so little time, so he went back to see her again. When he went back, his story was that he rang the intercom again, she came down to the door, and there was a look of annoyance on her face that he was back. And this so enraged him that he pulled his gun and shot her. Rebecca Schaefer was 21 years old, four years into a blossoming career. He had the fantasy that she'd be the perfect girl for him, just as he thought the singer Tiffany would be the perfect girl for him and the others that he targeted. It's more romance than sexual. It's actually very rare for someone whose interest is truly sexual to make an approach. Robert Bardo was diagnosed as a schizophrenic. He was sentenced to life without parole. The case made headline news in America and led to a change in United States law. When the stalking laws were passed in California in 1989, the LAPD's Specialist Threat Management Unit was created to investigate cases of aggravated stalking. John Lane was instrumental in creating the unit.
I know that even back during uh, the, the 1940s, there's cases of people that have inappropriately pursued uh, professional athletes. And uh, if you wrap in those that are obsessed and pursue public figures, there were many an individual that for decades have been stalking uh, other individuals. The legal definition of stalking is now very clear in California. Stalking, um, typically from a criminal perspective, the way it's defined is when someone uh, intentionally or maliciously follows or harasses another person and then ultimately some type of a credible threat is made that causes the victim to fear for their safety. You can certainly stalk somebody from your own home and satisfy the elements of stalking within the state of California um, by making phone calls, writing letters, as long as you've met that threshold of making a credible threat. Even though laws have been created to protect private information about celebrities, the internet will give the stalker all the information they need. Fans email the whereabouts of celebrities, where they eat, where they jog, where they shop. Their latest address is easily accessed on fans' websites. Well, I think that will continue to uh, exacerbate the problem because it does put uh, these public figures into the uh, living rooms of all of us on a very frequent basis. We know everything about our favorite celebrity. We have access to so much detail about those that we're interested in that uh, it isn't much of a leap for certain people to feel connected to these individuals. The LAPD Threat Management Unit deals with 250 cases each year. Well, certainly, uh, precautions-wise, you have to do your homework. You have, you have to know as much about that individual as you possibly can. Uh, that involves running a criminal history, checking them for weapons, uh, gun registration, that sort of thing. We also uh, utilize um, our contacts within the mental health arena. We check and see if there's any mental health history. We want to see what sort of stabilizing factors exist at home. Is this person in a, in a productive, nurturing relationship, or is he a loner? Is he living at a board and care, or is he living with family? Those are some of the issues that we want to evaluate. Also, uh, the stalking behavior itself. Is this person simply writing letters and making phone calls uh, from the comfort of his own home, or is he actually directing travel to the target of his obsession? Those are things that we need to take into account when we map out our strategy and, and move forward in making an arrest. The number of celebrity stalkers around the world is growing. There are tens of thousands of active cases. And anyone who is a public figure who's on television regularly, for example, has a number of stalkers. The question's how many? In the United States, when we first did research on this in the early 80s, we found that there were people who had 500 or 400 active cases at a time. Now, those were people who were getting 20,000 fan letters a month and had very, very visible careers at that moment. Before the laws were changed, the most famous stalking case culminated in the murder of Beatles idol, John Lennon. On December the 8th, 1980, Lennon was shot dead outside the Dakota building, his Manhattan home, by obsessed fan Mark Chapman. Chapman pleaded guilty to second degree murder and was sentenced to 20 years in prison. A recent request for application for parole was denied. Dr. Reed Malloy, forensic psychologist. Chapman felt that he was entitled to have John Lennon behave in certain ways. He felt betrayed by John Lennon. John Lennon had sung about the virtues of the absence of wealth and peace. However, John Lennon was living in a, a mansion-like apartment building, the Dakota, in Manhattan. More important than the betrayal was the fact that Chapman um, 
believed in his heart that by killing John Lennon, he could become the Holden Caulfield of his generation. Holden Caulfield is the protagonist in the book The Catcher in the Rye by J.D. Salinger. The book played an important role in John Hinckley Jr.'s attempted assassination of Ronald Reagan four months after Chapman killed Lennon. It was also an important book in the mind of Robert Bardo when he killed Rebecca Schaefer. With its central character, a young man on the edge of sanity, the book has almost become a stalker's Bible. For reasons that are not clear, uh, Chapman actually identified with Holden Caulfield, imitated some of his behavior as he moved around Manhattan before he shot Lennon, and actually sat down on the curb and was reading from his copy of Catcher in the Rye immediately after he killed John Lennon when the police arrived to arrest him. John Hinckley Jr tried to assassinate Ronald Reagan on March the 30th, 1981. Well, I was hired by the Office of the United States Attorney in Washington, D.C. in 1981 after the assassination attempt on President Reagan. Dietz's role was to evaluate whether Hinckley was sane or insane at the time of the crime. We interviewed him for days and days. We interviewed 30 or 50 other people who knew him and had spoken to him. We looked at all the physical evidence, uh, essentially spent a whole year studying that single case in order to understand why he had done this. We concluded that uh, he suffered from several different mental disorders, none of the most serious ones, and that he had been on a mission to find a way to impress his parents with his place in the world because he couldn't really compete with his successful brother or sister. Their portraits were hanging in the house, his wasn't. He vowed to get himself on the cover of Time magazine. Hinckley told the police that he had to choose between mass murder, skyjacking, a murder-suicide with a movie star, or a public figure assassination as a passport to fame. He chose the assassination of a public figure. After his arrest, it was discovered he was a stalker, obsessed with the actress Jodie Foster. He first became infatuated with Foster when she was a young actress making movies like Taxi Driver. He had stalked Jodie Foster uh, for quite some time, had done all the things that uh, countless other stalkers have done, uh, but he did not attack her. In the movie Taxi Driver, Robert De Niro's character, Travis Bickle, plans to assassinate a presidential candidate. It's possible that the character Travis Bickle um, was something of a role model for Hinckley. He did, to some extent, imitate Travis Bickle. He would play with guns in front of the mirror like Bickle did and so on. But that's just one of many influences on him. The important thing about Taxi Driver is that Hinckley watched it over and over and over, purposely subjecting himself to that influence. He chose that to imitate. He was happy as a clam when the U.S. Marshal Service was flying him around on helicopters from place to place because he'd never had that much attention in his life. He felt like a celebrity. That's one of the downsides of a culture of fame. Some people will do very evil things in order to gain their moment of fame. Chapman, Bardo, and Hinckley shocked the world with their actions and they put the fear of God into the glamorous lives of celebrities. What's striking about these attacks, these assassinations and these attempted assassinations that th these three men carried out, was that um, they were very young at the time. In contrast to most celebrity stalkers from our research uh, being in their mid to late 30s. <laughs> 